Today is the day after Thanksgiving. And uh, I have a, another camera mounted looking out the rear window. So now I have three cameras. And I will be showing this uh, active rear spoiler. I don't think anyone's really seen it and how it actually works in relation to the speed that you're going. So right now I'm going at below 45 miles per hour and it's still in the down, slightly down state. If I slow down a little bit more, like at 30, 25, okay. nothing. <laughs> I think I have to come to a total stop or drive really slowly. But uh, once I stop here at this junction, you should see it going back up. That's kind of weird, huh? I guess you have to come to a complete stop before it would um, go back up. I haven't really noticed it uh, moving all that much, so this would be a first for me as well. Again, hope this uh, video is informative. Uh, now that um, the rear spoiler the active rear spoiler is only available. Hey, look! Uh, that looks like someone I know. I bet you that's my wife driving that gorgeous white Tesla. Again, you see that once I pass 45 miles per hour, the rear spoiler goes down to make it more aerodynamic. And uh, yeah, these two are not letting me pass. girls are going shopping, it looks like they are going shopping. Today is Black Friday and yeah, I don't know if you noticed the uh, rear spoiler just came back up again. And uh, oh, um, yeah, you can only get the active rear spoiler now in um, the performance version which is now limited to only the P100. So, in order to get the active spoiler, you now have to spend the extra $40,000. Uh, that's kind of a greedy function, isn't it? I mean, a greedy, greedy way to get the active spoiler. No other way about it. So, yep, that's how Tesla is. Now it's all about money and nothing else, I suppose. Wow, she's all the way up there. And I need to test the autopilot under this bridge. So, let's see what happens. This would be the third recording, maybe? I think I skipped the day. So, notice how the lines go in and out. Even though I have a car in front of me, it's still gonna miss the one on the left. Once I get here, it goes away, and it comes back. And yeah, that's basically the autopilot thing that it makes. So, I'm gonna try 
try to catch up to my wife who's up there. She drives like a maniac, so I don't think I'll be able to catch her. Unless I go really fast. It's on the other side. <laughs> the police is on the other side. There goes my wife and the other two ladies shopping today. Doing some damage to the credit card today. Let's see what happens. What they do. To make this light. There we go. There's no sun today, so it's just a little bit. Hazy and cloudy, sometimes with a little bit of drizzle. So the roads are slightly wet. And I don't know if you guys been paying attention to the active spoiler. I'll, I'll try to point it out, but in terms of like seeing what happens. the spoiler actuating going down and then coming up and whatnot. So today the traffic is pretty clear. I think I'll play a little bit um, as everybody else is driving a little fast. Yeah, I can still play with the autopilot set it to one get a little closer you know that uh, even with a setting of one you won't be able to do what they call um, uh, slipstream so behind like a big truck or something you, you still won't be able to get close enough like right now you can see that I'm, I'm kind of far away from the uh, X5 and uh, slipstreaming, you really need to get up close, like around maybe five feet from the car in front of you, or the truck, preferably. And uh, people actually advise against it because uh, trucks tend to kick up uh, pebbles, and the pebbles uh, would cause some major damage to either your hood or your other things. So. How low do I have to go in order for the active rear spoiler to come back up? I have to like literally stop. Like press the brakes or something. So not with the regen. So let's say I go 40 again and then I do braking. Nope. Yeah. It has to go below like 10 maybe for to actually do anything, so... Uh, not much to play around with today. So 
so what do you guys think about the supercharger news? Now that uh, they're no longer able to get lifetime supercharging or lifetime free supercharging, you have to actually pay uh, per use. Though Tesla is going to give you 400 kilowatt hours of um, supercharging, it really isn't all that much. Uh, that's good for about a thousand miles of driving. In, in my car, it's probably good for 500 miles of driving. <laughs> um, it really isn't uh, a great deal of energy. This really isn't a good day for autopilot because autopilot uh, is, is really good at following traffic and stuff. There's no real traffic today. Everyone's out shopping, I suppose. And uh, yeah, people are driving a little bit more aggressively today. Also, there's a truck over there. I can I can show you what it looks like. And to verify, right now I have a set to one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and I'm going to follow the truck. Come on. Move over. And then show you how, how, um, how close you can actually get to the truck with a setting of one. Right? So I'm gaining on the truck and eventually it's going to just stop gaining because setting of one at a certain speed will allow you to only follow you know so close so right now as you can see it's still one of those issues with autopilot not recognizing what kind of car is in front of me it's a perfect example of uh, the Tesla autopilot version 1 with the mobile eye camera not working properly so I'm right behind this truck, uh, and I'm actually as the as the truck slows down, uh, I'm actually going closer to the truck, and I think the truck doesn't want me following him <laughs> because he's moving over. So I'm gonna move over also. Oh, actually, he's he's trying to pass this other guy. So yeah, so right now it looks like I'm about ten feet away at least. A good. Uh, two car lengths uh, behind the truck and I don't think I'm gonna get much benefit from from hyper mile I mean um, slipstream so uh, there's really no way you can use autopilot to slipstream um, the only way to do it is with um, uh, oh there goes a uh, pebble uh, luckily it wasn't a big trouble, but uh, that's one of the bad things about driving behind trucks because they tend to kick a lot of debris up. This guy has like some rear, uh, mud flaps in the back and is still kicking some debris up to to hit my car. So for uh, okay, for for the life of this, I mean for for, for everybody's information. I am putting my car at risk of some chipping, and uh, yeah, it really slipstreaming is, is, it doesn't really work well when you're so far away from the car. And again, with the autopilot, you're not gonna get close enough, even with the lowest setting, which is one, to get any significant uh, slipstream. So. Yeah, there you have it. Uh, I'm gonna disengage from this because uh, I don't want to uh, um, get too much or get too much damage from pebbles and such. So right after this car moves over, I will move over to a faster lane and uh, follow cars instead. And you can see with the cars, you. You should be able to see that with the setting of one, 
It's about the same. Watch out, vehicle stopped on shoulder ahead. I'm following about you can see like almost the length of this truck is what I'm following. You can fit a truck between me and this car in front of me. So slipstreaming, mm, uh, I don't think so. I don't know how people would do it. They would have to do it manually, which is very dangerous. Uh, if you're gonna do it manually, you have to trust your reaction time. And if you don't see anything in front of the truck, even though you're gonna be able to slow down faster than the truck, it's not advisable because the can't see what's in front of the truck so not even the Tesla um, the Tesla new radar bouncing uh, gimmick can do anything to help you out with that piece so yeah it's uh... oh I wanted to show you guys one thing about autopilot so autopilot, uh, it recognizes uh, dotted lines and non-dotted lines. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to slow down a little bit. So you see there's a solid line on the right of me. What would happen if I wanted to change lanes into that? So let's see what happens if it actually changes lanes. It's actually smart enough not to change lanes, which which is a good thing because I don't want to actually change lanes into the shoulder, right? So that's a good, good thing. Let's try it again. And no, it won't allow it. So on the left, I have dotted lines. So I, it's allowed. You can see that it changes to dotted lines when I change lanes. So there you have it. I'm going to try it one more time just for amusement and for your uh, education this guy is running on uh, his uh, donut that's why he's going so slow so yeah dotted line I can change lane solid line I cannot so good thing <laughs> good thing that it knows the difference again solid line to my right does not work so anyway I hope you learn a little bit from this short video that I did and uh, that you see what's happening with the, um, the rear active spoiler uh, it, it doesn't do anything even uh, above a certain speed uh, what I want to show you is maybe I disengage and then I go uh, a little fast it actually goes any lower 120 miles still the same so it seems like it only has one setting so anyway like and subscribe thanks for watching bye